Hey there, amplifiers. Thanks for tuning in. You know, one of the things I really love about what I do is to get to connect with some amazing people who have awesome insights and can help you peel the layers of the onion. So you're getting really in deep with your business and not just getting lost in the amount of data or different things that can actually be distracting. You're actually getting down to the core areas that need attention so you can make informed decisions, so you can be proactive, so you can take actions to amplify your business. So without further ado, um, I don't want to ask you if you haven't done this already. Make sure that you subscribe to Growth Amplifiers because we're looking to share the best tips, tools, and resources for optimizing and scaling your business by elevating the value you provide and experience that you provide to those you serve. And our guest today is a rock star professional. He is the founder of Mark Style CPA, certified public accountant, technology executive, and definitely an entrepreneur when it comes to rocking people's businesses. And like to welcome to Growth Amplifiers, Mark Styles. Mark, thanks for being here today. Thank you. Afternoon. How are you doing today? Doing really good. You know, it's now coming into the fall season, quarter four, and it's starting to get rid of that Florida humidity, and we're just really feeling the kind of things cooling down a little bit. I hear you. I hear you. So a little bit of a bit different paradigm shift for us because we're up here in the Northeast, um, you know, but uh, it's a better analogy probably from Florida that has kind of one season. Right. So when we when we're ushering in fall, it's also ushering in the fourth quarter, as you said. Right. And then that, that you know, which is a little bit of change, but also preparing for the for the for the next year uh, and which is really the best time for business owners to really sit back and really think about their strategy. And think about how their strategy actually matches up with with their actual business, right? Uh, and so, uh, it's. It, I think this is the perfect time for us to have this conversation, and uh, I'm excited to have it with you. So awesome, my friend. You know, that's that is the thing. We can get so busy working if we don't take this time to stop and prepare, then we could just not be making the full impact that we potentially could be. So, before we get into the heart of the subject, could you do a Give you a little introduction but you, could you give us a little bit of background about how you got into what you're doing now certainly certainly um you know uh, i was fortunate enough to to play collegiate basketball down at stetson university uh and i was probably the outlier of athletes that kind of wanted to get my my undergrad done quick and start my masters up while it was still free because it was full ride right <laughs> so i uh, really took advantage of that uh but also was extremely busy i mean it, it, we, we we a lot of times glorify student athletes and they're like oh they're just really good at this specific discipline uh, but if they're if they're a good collegiate athlete they're actually spending just as much time in in in, in the library in, in their dorm room etc as they are as they are on the on the court um, or field or wherever they are so you know you're essentially taking on a full-time job and then trying to go to school as well so um first off it helps you about with a lot of time management which i think is is why you see a lot of uh you know at athletes in the business world because they are able to kind of manage and and juggle a couple of the, a couple of different things at once because they were kind of forced to when they became young adults right um, so in that situation you know I really wanted to focus on something that came kind of easy to me and kind of made mm -hmm. sense uh, and and that's kind of I, I'm a big believer that college which is a social experiment. It's not necessarily where you're learning more because if you really think about what you learned in college, you kind of just reinforced everything that people had either told you or you learned in high school, um, you know, and then just, or gave you a label for what that thing is that you always knew was right, right? Or what you always knew was wrong. So, so you know, for me, the, the thing was find what's that whatever comes easy so that you can be successful in basketball and you can be successful in education. Uh, took that accounting path uh, from there, you know, uh, went and played professional basketball for a little bit, came back and really then started working on my, on, on my actual career. I, I'd love to say that professional basketball was my career too, but my actual career was really going to be in accounting and in the business world. Uh, Cause that was what came, came well to me. And I'd worked, uh, had been fortunate enough to do some internships uh, with smaller CPA firms that really touched all the different sides of accounting, uh, which gave me a really different perspective than you're traditionally given as an accounting uh, grad right out of school where you're, going to a big, big company and they're putting you in a, in a cubicle and saying, learn this one little discipline. Um, and it really kind of opened my eyes, but it also what it did is it got me really involved with a lot of small business owners, right? 
Um, and what's and and when they really talk about small business owners being the life livelihood like the life would livelihood of our industry, our 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 society and everything, it really is. Because even when we get to larger companies, they're all leaning on small business owners and things like that, and, and the creative people that are giving them that innovation. And even if you're a, an employee within an organization, you haven't started thinking about going off on your own. You can be an entrepreneur, right? And then you can really yeah. think business minded from your discipline and kind of work from that. So taking all of those and collecting all of those and working through a couple different CPA firms, I founded my own in 2009. Uh, and long story short, built a virtual model um, that we actually had to wait for millennials. Uh, and, you know, everybody mm -hmm. back in 2009 was used to that traditional, hey, here's my fan test. You're going to come sit in front of me with your shoebox. We're going to talk about your taxes. And then, you know, maybe then we talk about business and things like that after you evaluate your taxes, which isn't still uncommon to this day. But we our pair the, the shift that we wanted to do is we go listen the, the world was going digital let's go digital too and let's go digital now and make it efficient and effective for customers to come in and if for any of their compliance work uh but then when we really want to dial in to to the to the to the bread and butter of our firm which is fractional cfo services and and, and things of that nature was going okay that can be a good stepping stone of getting the, comp the customer not feeling like he's always coming into my office or she's always coming into my office they're they're able to kind of self-sufficiently upload most of their stuff, get all their stuff uh, over to us compliance wise. And then we can really dig in when we're having those face to faces or we're having those kind of consulting engagements where we can dig in where the compliance stuff is done. It's taken care of. It's all good. We, we took care of that. You gave that to us earlier. Now let's dive into your strategy and how your strategy matches your numbers. Um, and that's kind of how the evolution of MAS CPA came, uh, became. And, uh, we, we've, we, we waited our time for millennials, but then we also struck gold with, uh, 2020, unfortunately, you know, COVID happened, uh, but we were ready. Uh, and so then I think that gave us exposure to other customers that kind of their, their CPA firm was closed because their staff wasn't wasn't working remotely, <laughs> you know, or, you know, or or they did have their normal attrition that occurred. So, you know, we were, we were able to kind of keep keep moving forward and keep giving that those benefits, especially in one of the most trying times for strategy, you know, PPP loans, you know, you know, you, like all of those you, you, you talk about. But that, you know, the, the disaster loans that came out of that, the, the stimulus and how to manage that stimulus properly, as well as also diving into, you know, the certain em employee retention credits that you could get and things like that, that brought strategy so much to the forefront for a lot of small business owners that didn't have to think about it. Normally they said, hey, listen, I'm either going to file my, my taxes mm -hmm. or maybe wait like six years to file my taxes all at once. Right. And they're like, wait, I have to file all my taxes and get all this lined up so I can take advantage of this. This thing is going to help me stay in business or it's going to help me you know, maintain the course I was already on. So, um, so that's kind of just how we've evolved into, in, into this. And that's, you know, uh, a little tidbit into kind of uh, uh, how we support our customer base. Hey there, this is Kenny from Growth Amplifiers, here to ensure you get your awesome ideas into action to grow and improve your business and achieve your full potential. Take the first step by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. Take the assessment to get your personalized score. Then select from free resources to learn how to improve your score. Don't wait. Be proactive and take action now by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. And always keep on amplifying. Now, let's get back to the show. What I like about what you're saying is you're not just kind of doing the same thing that people have always done because you're acknowledging that things have changed. Uh, technology has given us new options to do things differently. And now that you're uh, working with people, you're helping take things to make them more efficient and effective, but also really giving them the clarity so that they can make important decisions on what's best for them. I did a lot of networking with different business advisors and one of the things that they were joking about is the typical old school uh, CPA mm -hmm. who was kind of more like a historian yeah. of telling you what happened. And they, they said, you know, there's a small percentage of CPAs who've woken up and seeing things can be a lot different. They, they're looking ahead so that you're actually taking actions now to they will influence your future. So the you've worked with different types of businesses. What is the biggest challenge that you see them facing that maybe they don't know that they don't know? 
it's the hardest thing and, I, and i've done this myself as a business owner it's the hardest thing in the world for a business owner that built their business on the back of their education their their experience and or their you know um uh or or their their you know situation right where mm -hmm. they are the expert and it's really it's 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 it's, a, it's an exercise in, in in humility to get out of your own way and that's mm -hmm. really the, the thing because you know the biggest thing that we talk to business owners with and, and you have to go through these stages so this is not saying you can you can you know do the immediacy and now thing and jump jump <laughs> you know jump the whole stage but everybody is an operator to start off if you start off a small business or if you small off a mid, medium-sized business or you have a great idea that gets VC backing you you are starting off as an operator and 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 that's the thing everybody always talks about startups and what what all they do but small business owners are just small startups right and then that, that but we, we don't want to put it in the kind of context you think startups go in public and they're going to make millions of dollars and everything but that startup still worked with hey they didn't they probably paid themselves 25 percent of what the market rate was for their salary they yeah. worked they overworked it's 40 to 80 mm -hmm. hours right and then and then they worked so hard and they got to a certain point where it was either too big for them or they needed to bring on other people and, and anybody listening to this 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 podcast right now that that is a small business owner was like, well, that sounds exactly like me, right? Because you started out right. with an idea or you started out with your expertise and you worked your rear end off and you got to a point where you were successful and you felt like, all right, I feel comfortable now. But then, the, but then you either figured it out what the next step was or you're still there. And if you mm -hmm. figured it out what the next step is, you told yourself, I can't be the operator all the time. I need to be an owner. And it's just like if we go to big business or just going back to that an, an, uh, um, um, analogy of start, startup, you go to a startup that has a CEO, right? That CEO can't touch everything. If that CEO touches everything, that startup is not going to be as successful. Then they have a VC backing and it's throwing them millions of dollars, right? But right. you don't have that, but you have, you have your wife, you have your kids, you have, you know, you have your social activities. If you have social activities, right? You have aspirations mm -hmm. of owning a house. Or, or doing this or taking this trip to somewhere like those are you can you almost think about those as, you, as your VC behind you. Right. And if, mm -hmm. if that's something that you have to hold yourself accountable then, to, then you go, OK, how do I make that next step? Because I need to grow as fast as less, uh, VC would want a startup to grow. Right. You know, mm -hmm. but at, at my pace so I can get the goals that I have, because and that that's kind of, you know, what, where where the crux of it all ends up being. Right. You know, it's very easy to go, hey. I know this, and and the best and the best way I say this is, and, and admittedly, it's because I have a little, I got a good amount of construction background. Is, you know, uh, you know, great site developers move dirt. They, they can move dirt. They can tell you how much dirt they need. They can tell you where it needs to go. They can tell you how it needs to be graded out. They can they can they can have they have all the equipment. They can pretty much tell you what the costs are going to be within no within a fraction of a cent. A lot of the time, there is right there, right? They can they can tell you. They know it. They don't even need to talk to their accountant, right? And you can do great at that. And you can do that over and over and over again. And then I can go look at your books and say, you're losing a hundred thousand dollars every month. Mm -hmm. You're moving a lot of dirt. It's great. It's great. But you haven't thought about, okay, if I am, am I at break even? And then if I'm at break even, does my markup need to be X so that I can make this? Cause that's going to achieve this objective that I've set for us. So a lot of the things in the, the primary thing, it all comes out of that, you know, be an owner, not an operator comes mm -hmm. with the thing of going, Get what's in here and put it on paper. Let's get your process and procedure together, right? Then let's understand what your strategy is. And then once we understand your strategy, then it's my job to start working working with the numbers to make the numbers match the strategy so we can set up objectives. And then you can establish what the key results of those objectives are. And then you can work on your staircases. Because the way we always think about objectives is very similar to how we, we think about goals with our with our internal teams, right? So, you know, we set our objectives up to be smart objectives, just like you set up smart goals, you know, specific, mm -hmm. measurable, attainable, real time, or relevant and time boxed. Right. So we do the same mm -hmm. thing. And if you think about that, all of the objectives that you establish for the half year, for the year, for the next five years. Right. That's a landing for you. And, and our goal is to go is, is to work on what the staircase, what the steps are to get to that landing. Right. And when you hit that landing, you hit that you hit that objective, you hit that goal. And and when you say that with goals, it's really easy. Hey, I made this personal goal that I'm going to run a 5K by, you know, December 31st. Right. 
All right, so mm -hmm. I'm running next X and I'm getting my times where I want it to be. Boom, boom, boom. We got it, right? We hit that. The business work, same, same type of deal, but you have to understand that they're just as I brought up earlier about the moving dirt, there's a duality of business. So there's there's actual doing, there's the operations, and then there's the numbers behind it. And and our goal is always so that you make good strategy and don't make bad strategy, which is a bunch of fluff and nonsensical things that you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna make X and we're gonna do all these things. Well, great, if you're gonna do make X and do all these things, how are you going to attain that, right? And, and we've seen that in, in any different environment, any different discipline, right? Some people comes up with a bunch of hyperbole and it sounds great and you're like, yeah, you're gonna do it. But then they have no sequential steps to get to that landing. And so that's kind of, you know, that's what we, uh, the biggest thing that we work with all our customers at, our small business owners at the beginning is, is really that is going, Hey, let's take what's inside your head. Let's build out processes and procedures. Cause that's going to, that's going to allow you to scale. Once we allow you to scale, then we go, okay, let's talk about the strategy for the next six months, the next year, the next three years, the next five years. All right, great. We got that lined up. And so you hear here, I'm a CPA. We've talked a lot about strategy. We've talked a lot about a, a lot about, you know, process and procedure. We haven't talked once about numbers, right? So we go through all of those exercises first. And what happens there is our, our business owners normally have an aha moment. They're like, wait a minute, we're focusing on all these because this is what's going to get me to 2026. And it's like, yes. All right. So we're there and you have these strategies. So looking at how your numbers are tracking now, if you want to hit that, we need to do this, 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 and this. And there's multiple ways to attain that. But now what's, what's important is you are not an operator anymore, right? You're an owner. So then we're building your leadership team of the experts that are in each department of your organization. And if they're not in your organization, and we have this little moniker as well, and you can probably listen to another podcast about that by me. But uh, we basically say, if uh, you, you, your business is a box, right? You can't think outside of the box unless your box is full. And your box is full of operations and marketing and, and, and finance and accounting, right? So your mm -hmm. leadership team, are the leaders of all of those departments, right? And they should be they should be funneling up to the CEO or the owner their ideas and their strategy to hit the goals that the owner is establishing, right? Because everybody get everybody gets CEO mixed up because they hear executive and they're like, all right, make all the decisions, do all the things. You're really the chief messaging officer. Your job is to articulate the strategy and have backup of why the strategy works so you can empower your leadership team to think that way. And to bring you the bring you the the tactical steps to reach those land those landings of those that staircase. So that's a big thing that we kind of work into. So you can start kind of see how that you know a, a CPA has so much more value now because you understand the duality of business and you understand here. But for the longest time, it was such an archaic model that here was all that mattered because you were coming to me for compliance stuff and you were coming to me for this. But think about what happens in big business or startups we're talking about. The CEO mm -hmm. and CFO are, are Bert and Ernie, right? They're Bert and Ernie. It's the best example of this. The CEO has great ideas and, and wants to go do all of these things, Bert, right? Like, no, Ernie, sorry, Ernie. Bert yeah. was always worried about stuff and was like, wait, the pigeons, and was always going, hey, how do I, <laughs> how do, I do all these things? And like, hey, Ernie, Ernie's sitting in the, in, the, in the bathtub with rubber ducky, and I'm trying to figure out how we're paying for rent. Right. Like that's kind of, you know, <laughs> the same type of deal. Well, my job is to take Ernie's ideas and put numbers behind them. So that if we're walking in front of a VC company or we're walking in front of an investor or if we're just trying to hit a specific objective, we can articulate it and be excited about it. And Ernie can do what he does, what Ernie does best, which is sell the idea. Right. And be the mm -hmm. chief messaging officer. And then he has backup for CFO, which is Ernie, which is Bert. Right. And Bert can come in and go, yeah, so this is how, you know, the strategy that Ernie just talked about, this is how we ha we hit it by number. So hopefully that's a little good analogy and a little trip down memory lane for most of us all, right? <laughs> I love it. So um, to kind of leave us with an, an actionable insight, for those who are tuning in, what is, an, what is an action that if someone's tuning in, they're hearing this information, they're saying, I get the big picture, but what, what's something that they could do that, um, would be small enough for them to take a first step action towards making that improvement. Actually take a second and evaluate yourself. Like you evaluated getting into a certain business, like you evaluated the customer or taking on a specific project. It was like a little bit of a glitch. Yeah. 
So, no, I, I think the thing is, is, and I'll just kind of recap of what I was saying. Uh, you know, I think the thing is being honest with yourself. Just like you'd be honest with a project that you're going to take on or a customer that you're going to take on or a venture that you're going to take on. Uh, you're going to be hypercritical and you're going to do your due diligence. But a lot of the time, times it's busy. We don't take the time to do dilig due diligence on ourselves. And when you do due diligence on yourself, you start already taking that step to being an owner because you're going, hey, I have these shortfalls. This is where I have blind spots over here. Right. I need people mm -hmm. that that are going to empower that you know, and, and spotlight those blind spots so that our stra strategies hold, because it really all comes down to that. Um, so I would say be honest with yourself, because then you're going to realize your box isn't full. And if you realize that they can find that they can they can they can identify those blind spots that you were, who was the guy with the great idea or the girl with the great idea who had the, had, who knew what what they were going to do was going to use all of their expertise to build this great business. You've done it. Congratulations. You've done it. Now it's time to say, hey, how do I take the next step? And that's looking inward and being this thing and to not be overly long winded. I had a conversation with a, a business owner. They made $50 million. The wife was a CEO. The husband was the chief chief operating officer. And I asked him, I was like, they're like, yeah, so we work eight to 10 hours a week, They're like a day. And, and, and it ends up being, you know, it ends up being, you know, we, we take it home and, and we talk about it and do that. Or when you when you talk about it at dinner and you do all those things, what do you think about during work day? And they were like, well, I mean, I work, but then I also think about the fact that I should have spent some time with my kids and I sh we should have just had a better dinner. And I was like, so then the eight to 10 hours that you're working are really six to eight. And you spent two to four thinking about what you did wrong after you left work. So keep work here. Keep keep life here. And then you're going to start. Start realizing that if you can be hyper focused at work and you can be truly honest with yourself, you're going to find, especially as a business owner, if you're doing it right, if you're a business owner, you're going to find a lot of time in the day to get business done, right? So that you can stop that six in that six to eight hour time frame and actually have those conversations with your wife and have those conversations, you know, with your kids and not have to bring, because we always think, we always think, like, hey, I'm bringing work home. But you're also, when you bring work home, that means the next day you're bringing home to work, whether you like it or not, it's there. And that's just a perfect example of being honest with yourself. And like that owner had that aha moment. It's like, Oh wait. And it was like, yeah. So, and then the, the conversation really came around your finance director needs training and your controller's not, not, not holding weight. So you're taking over for him. And then you guys are stressed out about it. And you're like, why can't we have family time? That's how you have it. You got to be honest with yourself and then identify and find people that are going to find your black, your, that are going to, uh, they're going to shine light on your blind spots. So there you have it. Be honest with yourself and work with other amplifiers who have uh, expertise in the areas that you might need a little bit of fresh perspective. So definitely check out Mark's website, markstylescpa.com. He does help businesses entrepreneurs, as mentioned in this interview, really understand, take that Ernie vision, translate it into the right numbers so that the birds of the world can really get aligned with it, all that and more. So thank you for, for tuning in, Mark. I appreciate you and what you do. And make sure that if you're tuning in now to uh, connect, reach out, check out Mark's website, uh, reach out to him if you're looking for that fresh perspective and whatever you're doing, just make sure you're being proactive to be the change in the cause of the matter that you want to see in your business. So thank you, Mark. I appreciate you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. This is great. You know, I appreciate the opportunity to come sit on this podcast with you. And, and I think what you're doing and, and how you're really you know, informing other, other business owners and other, other amplifiers is, is really a great, a great, you know, a great connection point for us all. Um, but also, you know, a great tool that will, I think will reap benefits down the line. So thanks. Appreciate the time. Excellent. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.